Hi, my name's Ray from the Radio Workshop. I've decided to put a, a video together of clips from all the, tut well not all the tutorial videos I've made, but uh, quite a few of them. So anyone thinking of joining the members area, it'll give them a taster of, of what to expect. Um, there's how the AGC works. I mean, these videos, there, there are lots of them, so I can't take clips from all of them uh, covering multimeters, how to use test equipment, power supplies, fault finding, how to read circuit diagrams. Uh, I've got a list here of just a few. Um, valve heaters in parallel and in series, power supplies with uh, mains droppers and transformers, audio amplifier stage, IF stage, mixer oscillator, goes on and on. So I thought you know, anyone that's thinking of joining, they might want to get a taster by looking at a few clips. None of the videos are, these are for beginners and people perhaps just starting out um, or, or even people that are restoring radios and uh, you yeah, might, might want to top up uh, on their knowledge uh, or look out of interest. I mean we're, we're forever learning. Um, I've been repairing radios what, since I left school for over, well, well over 40 years, I, I can't count, it's too long. And I'm still learning. Uh, even now, I'm still learning. So, yeah, I just thought you might like to have a look at a few snips. None of it's going to bog you down with mathematics or, or deep sort of theory and formulas and stuff that you don't understand, that I don't understand. Um, in fact, a chap emailed me only yesterday and he said, I like that your style, the way um, it's not like a classroom, but you sit in your workshop. Um, and what was it he said? Um, uh, in layman's terms, that's it, so you can understand. Anyway, uh, here's the first clip. This is where, where we're looking around a chassis. Okay, this is the Bush DAC90A radio chassis. Uh, now you'll remember in the video about reading circuit diagrams, I mentioned various bits and pieces, such as the variable tuning capacitor. This is two variable capacitors on one shaft. Okay, and when you turn that, these aluminium veins mesh with the static veins here or or unmesh, so that increases or decreases the the capacity. Okay, and you've got um, oscillator and aerial sections on there. So that's the variable tuning capacitor. These are the IF transformers. Here we are, let's get a decent shot. IF transformers, first IF, second IF and you've got two adjustments on each one. Don't twiddle those unless you know what you're doing. They're the IF transformers. We'll go under the chassis in a moment. There's a lot more in various videos about looking around the chassis, working your way around. Um, the next one is about AGC. Now bear in mind, the, these are just very, very small clips. Uh, the videos, um, some of them go on for half an hour or more. Um, so here's a quick look at the AGC video, how, how AGC works, what AGC is, what it's for, uh, etc. So have a look at this clip. Right, I'm trying to keep this this simple. I'm not including a lot of other components here that have nothing to do with it. It'll just complicate everything. This is our double diode triode, all right? This diode here, you'll remember in the video about detectors, that's where we get our audio from, okay? This other diode, I said last time, if you remember, forget that for a minute. Well, we're not going to forget it now. This is where we get our AGC voltage from. AGC is very interesting and very useful. As I say, there's a lot more to it than just a, a quick video clip. Uh, next one is bandwidth. What is bandwidth? IF bandwidth, you hear people say, oh, that radio is, uh, is bandwidth, is as wide as a barn door, uh, narrow bandwidth. Uh, this next video is all about bandwidth. Have a quick look at this clip. It's uh, hopefully, uh, as I said before, explained, explained in layman's terms so you can understand it, but also uh, with enough technical information so you can understand what's going on. Have a look at this clip. Okay, look at this. This here is the dial pointer. Okay, so we are going to tune along and listen to Dave. There we are. We're listening to Dave. Let's have a listen to Fred. Let's turn the tuning knob, move our pointer along. We tune into Fred. Okay. 
Now you're wondering, what's these bits? What's this here? This, as I mentioned before when talking about IF bandwidth, this is our listening window. This is our receiver. This here, between there and there, this is what we can hear. Everything in that, that slot there, we can hear. Alignment. Uh, there are several videos on alignment. How to align the radio without test equipment, how to align one with test equipment. I think there's another way, there are various videos about alignment uh, taking you through the, the whole stage of alignment, RF alignment as well as IF alignment. Um, it's just a, a little snippet. Uh, I think this one's of me actually aligning a radio. By the way, this isn't all circuit diagrams on bits of paper. Uh, you actually get to see me which is the downside, of course, of the videos. Um, but there's also a lot of practical stuff that you actually get to see on the radio itself, as you'll see now. OK, I've got the output meter connected. Uh, this output meter, again, you can use the AVO or a, a multimeter on, uh, on the loudspeaker connections, all right, um, as we did with the IF alignment. So we, we're reading audio on the meter. Okay, and what we're going to do is just peek up the, the medium wave trimmer, which is there. You probably can't hear, that's going a little bit quieter. Looking on the meter, that's peaked up the aerial circuit there. I find all this fascinating. Um, I'm a bit of a nerd. I suppose I'm quite passionate about vintage radios. Uh, I, I, this is going to sound silly. I've got a lot of uh, reference books from the 1940s, um, that sort of era, uh, and I love reading. I read them in bed. It's awful, isn't it? I mean, I shouldn't say that. It's dreadful, really. No, but I love it. I just love reading all about this. Here's an, uh, another one, another circuit that I'm taking you through about um, a typical audio output stage. Have a look at this. This is an audio output stage. This is the valve. In this case it's a pentode, as in five, one, two, three, four, five. Five electrodes. You don't I've not drawn the heater and you don't count the heater uh, as an electrode. So you've got anode, suppressor grid, screen grid, control grid, and cathode. Don't worry too much about those at the moment. This is the HT, comes in here, feeds the anode via the output transformer. This is the primary. This is the anode load, all right? You need the anode load there. When I do the video on valves, we'll talk more about how the valve itself works, but not in this video. This is the loudspeaker. This is the, the secondary winding. So check for HT here. Obviously, if there's no HT here, then there's a power supply problem. Check for HT here. This is a screen feed resistor. This is the screen grid. These video clips aren't in order because the next one is about um, reading circuit diagrams. I believe there's part one and part two because it was too long to make one video. So uh, yeah, how to read circuit diagrams or schematics as they're sometimes called. Okay, this is the circuit diagram of a, a typical 1940s vintage radio. Um, this is where the mains comes in here. On off switch, one in each line there. The on-off switch is usually on the back of the volume control, sometimes on the back of the tone control pot. Capacitor across the mains there, that's a 0.1 microfarad. That is to filter out mains interference. Right, let's look at the components. As I said, that's a capacitor. These are resistors, R14, R13, R11. That's a resistor there, R8, but that's the volume control donated by that wire there connected to the arrow. The arrow moves up and down. That is the wiper, the center connection on the volume control. When it's down here, minimum volume, turn it up to the end, that end, maximum volume. I'm not gonna put too many clips on because uh, you, it'll get boring, but you, you're getting the idea of what these videos are about. Next one's about power supplies, and uh, then we'll follow that one by series heaters, series valve heaters, what that's all about. All right, this is the chassis of the radio. This is the chassis. This is the mains coming in. This is a rectifier valve here. That's the anode. That's the cathode. 
So we have the mains in here, between here and here, and that you, you put a, a little AC sign like that, that's the mains in. <coughs> what we do, this rectifier, it's a half wave rectifier, it only allows, this is the mains dropper, it only allows this half of this waveform through. So in other words, half wave, it just allows half the waveform through. So what we end up with is, in fact, after the rectifier, we end up with that. Right, valve heaters in vintage valve radios, series heaters. Let's clear up some confusion, uh, answer a few questions here. Uh, these valves, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, these are the valves in a Bush DAC-90A. Rectifier UY41, output valve UL41, etc. Each valve wants a different voltage, 14, 12, blah, blah, blah. That adds up to 116 volts. Okay, so across here, from here to here, we need 116 volts. Forget that for a minute, that's not there. Okay, so we're on 116 volts across here. Now the mains is 230 volts, so there's a problem. We need to drop, this is the mains dropper, we need to drop the mains voltage. The difference between 230 and 116, the voltage to drop is 114 volts. So this needs to drop 114 volts. So what resistance do we need here? Next is a, a video clip where we look at components. Um, in this case, I think it's of the mains dropper. There are various components, you know, as you know, transformer, capacitors, all sorts of bits and pieces, IF transformer, mains transformers, uh, audio output transformer. Um, there are coils, switches. What we're going to do is have a look at a few components in, uh, in this clip. I think it's just one component in the clip, the mains dropper. Um, and then go on to multimeters, how to use a test meter. Um, again, it's just a short clip. There are other videos. There's how to use a signal generator, um, various test equipment videos. Um, so yeah, first of all, let's have a look at the component followed by the, the multimeter clip. This is a mains dropper resistor. Basically, it's like a porcelain tube with resistance wire round wound from that end to that end. And these are, are the taps for the various uh, resistances there. You've got 24 ohms, 14 ohms, that one's not marked, 156 ohms. Um, you know, these are metal bands with the tag sticking out for the connections. This one's actually from a television, but it doesn't matter. If one of these goes open circuit, say the 14 ohm one there, you use one of these. Here we are, radio spares, made in England, don't see that much anymore. This is called a mains dropper section. And basically, this one's what? 180 ohms, you'd obviously use a 14 ohm one. What you do is, you wire that. This is the popular sort you'll come across a lot. There's the, the adjustment with a screwdriver. There's another variable capacitor, a uh, very small one. You won't come across this sort of thing. These are used in communications equipment. In your radio, this is from a Bush DAC-90A. So you use that, you see across there, like that, to replace all these. Do a nice neat job of it, wrap them round each end, tin these first with a soldering iron, tin the ends of that, make a nice neat job of it. That's the 500 volt range, that's 250, getting a bit of a reading. There's 100 volts, 25 volts, there we are. Now you can see uh, current and voltage right is there. That says 10, 11, 12, 12 and a half volts, there we are. There's the 10, there's the 15, there's the 20, there's the 25. So if we go down to 10 volts, you'll see that goes off the scale. This is why you want to start off higher up. So there we are. There is, that says 20. That says 20 there, that's 200 milliamps. You've got to get used to reading your scale because you might think, well, is that 20 amps? Well, no, hardly. Is it 20 milliamps? No, have a look at your scale. You see that is naught to 100, all right? It says resistance and, and uh, sorry, current and voltage. 
so it's 0 to 100. There's also uh, the later type of meter I've covered in that, the, the multimeter, um, various things like that. So this is this is giving you an idea of what to expect if you should become a member of the uh, the Radio Workshop website. There are more tutorial videos being added all the time. There's the weekly videos. I won't show you those because they, you know, there's not a lot to see. Here. Just a clip of a weekly video. Um, there's one more which is a, a chassis view. I'll just show you this one more clip uh, before you doze off completely. <laughs> I'm probably keeping you from the pub. Um, so just watch this one more. I just wanted to show you this this area here. This um, These are aerial trimmers, oscillator trimmers are on top of the chassis. I just wanted to show you all this area because this one isn't too bad on this radio. It's a pilot radio, a Blue Peter pilot. This is all quite open and accessible. These here, I don't know whether you can see this, these are the silver mica capacitors that are used. I don't know what happened to the audio in that clip, not too clear. Anyway, there we are. There's, as I say, there's more videos. There's uh, all sorts. I can't think of them all now. There's a whole list, actually, you'll see on the website. Um, and what I do, I each one I add is uh, listed on the website so you can see what's been added. So that's it. What I will be doing in the future, having now covered reading circuit diagrams and done a lot of the uh, the theory side of it, um, I'm now going to move over to more practical aspects of restoring the vintage valve radios, more kind of hands-on, uh, more you know getting getting to grips. Here we are, if I can show you this with there's a power supply. This actually is a I've made a video about this. That's a an AM transmitter. <laughs> um, so yeah, gonna gonna move more towards the practical side because I've now covered uh, as I say, reading circuit diagrams, going through the IF stage, mixer oscillator later stage, uh, detector, power supplies. Having covered all that, we can move, uh, as I say, more hands-on stuff. You know, let, let's get the soldering iron out and the screwdriver and, and actually get to work. So we're going to move towards that. That's uh, that aspect of it all. OK, that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope I haven't bored you too much. Um, but it's given you a, a taste of perhaps what to expect should you join. Thanks very much for watching. Take care. See you soon. Bye-bye.